The Trojan asteroids, which take their name from Greek mythology, are known to orbit the Sun in two groupings. One that travels in front of our solar system's giant planet Jupiter, and the other that follows Jupiter. NASA has designed a spacecraft called Lucy to investigate this group of Trojan asteroids. These prehistoric space pebbles may offer crucial hints about the formation of our solar system and, maybe, the beginning of life on Earth. The NASA Discovery Program formally assigned a list of seven asteroid targets to the mission a year after approval. With time, that number has increased to 10. This video covers Lucy's findings so far, so stay tuned as we uncover the most shocking discovery. It is important to note that the mission's primary research targets are the Trojan asteroids. These objects are assumed to be leftovers from the primordial disk that created the Sun and planets that were drawn into Jupiter's gravitational pull somewhere in the early solar system. According to NASA, the Trojans are supported by the Sun and its greatest planet in a gravitational balancing act. The most enormous Trojan asteroid, which measures 160 miles or 250 kilometers broad, is one of 7,000 known to exist. When we first began studying the Trojans from the ground, Leveson observed, one of the truly remarkable things about them is how diverse they are from one another. Therefore, to comprehend what this population is trying to teach us about how planets develop, it is necessary to grasp its variety, which is why Lucy was set. These asteroids, Eurybates, Queta, Polymel, Lucius, Aurus, Patrioclus, and Minotius, all named after heroes, are the ones Lucy will visit explicitly. Although Eurybates is not a Trojan, it was selected because it is the most significant relic of a major collision that occurred in antiquity and could provide insight into the inside of an asteroid. The tiny asteroid Queta was discovered to be a satellite of Eurybates via Hubble Space Telescope observations. According to Donya Douglas Bradshaw, project manager for Lucy at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the spacecraft's conception and construction required a team of more than 500 engineers and scientists. The Lucy fossil, the remnants of a prehistoric human ancestor found in Ethiopia back in 1974, serves as the inspiration for the mission's name. Researchers have used the skeleton to put together various parts of human evolution, and the NASA Lucy team hopes their mission will do the same for the history of our solar system. To analyze the composition of the asteroid surface materials, Lucy employs three scientific tools – color and black and white cameras, a thermometer, and an infrared imaging spectrometer. The spacecraft's antenna, which is also used to calculate the masses of asteroids, is also used to communicate with Earth. The scientific team will be able to use the equipment to look for moons orbiting these asteroids and craters on their surfaces which may assist in establishing their ages and the asteroid's genesis and history. Hal Weaver, the principal investigator for Lucy's L. Lorry instrument at the John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, claims that the spacecraft will pass by the asteroids at a speed of about 15,000 miles per hour, that's 6,705 meters per second, which is roughly four times slower than the speed at which NASA's New Horizons spacecraft sped past Pluto and the far-off object Arakoth. Lucy will also be closer to each asteroid during its flyby by 600 miles or 965 kilometers, compared to 2,000 miles or 3,218 kilometers during the Arakoth flyby, leading to four times higher resolution in the Trojan photos. According to NASA, Lucy is more significant than a four-story skyscraper, spanning more than 46 feet or 14 meters from tip to tip. The spaceship is powered by two enormous arrays of solar cells designed to unfurl and lock into position after launch. The massive solar panels that power the Lucy spacecraft sensors are each roughly the width of a school bus. But Lucy also has fuel, allowing it to make precise maneuvers as it travels toward the asteroids. It also has two high-resolution cameras, an instrument that utilizes infrared light to examine and detect ice, organic stuff and other minerals in each asteroid, and a device that measures the surface temperatures of the target asteroids that may all be found on board the spacecraft. 
a primary and backup motor winding were included in the design of the solar array to increase dependability for deploying the mission-critical solar array. Engineers working on Lucy will use this redundancy by running both motors simultaneously to provide more torque than was utilized on launch day. According to ground testing, this additional force could be sufficient to draw the tangled lanyard the last distance required for latching. The two large solar arrays were set to be deployed by Lucy an hour or so after launch. Unexpectedly, one of the fan-like arrays expanded as planned, while the other stopped just short of finishing this procedure. Initial tests suggest that the lanyard used to pull out the solar array may have failed to do so successfully. However, the exact cause of this condition is still unknown. However, Lucy engineers discovered the unlatched solar array is almost entirely open, positioned at around 345 out of a total of 360 degrees, and is supplying enough energy for the spacecraft via a combination of rigorous in-flight solar array characterization and base testing. The mission crew recently disclosed that they had stopped trying to completely unfold one of the spacecraft's solar arrays, leaving it at 98% unfolded. They are convinced that this missing slither won't influence the mission, according to authorities. NASA said that the problem could have been brought on by a lanyard that aids with the deployment of the array. The task would take the spacecraft to eight previously undiscovered asteroids in 12 years. After passing an asteroid in the central asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, the spacecraft will investigate seven Trojan asteroids. Lucy will ultimately swing back to Earth's orbit three times throughout its mission to get gravity aids that can catapult it in the proper direction. As a result, Lucy will be the first spacecraft to visit Jupiter and return to Earth. In January, the main belt asteroid 1999 VD57 was formally added to Lucy's list of targets by the Lucy mission team, increasing the program's total number of space rocks to 10. This asteroid was rather distinctive. Hal Leverson, Lucy's principal investigator and a planetary scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in Colorado, described asteroid 1999 VD57 as as an S-type or stony object with the tentative name Dinkanesh. The crew claims that the asteroid was overlooked because it is so tiny, but now that it is there, the mission may take advantage of the chance to practice its Trojan tour one more time. As initially planned, Lucy's trajectory will bring it at least three times closer to the asteroid than the next nearest one at a distance of 40,000 miles. The crew will get an early chance to test the twin terminal tracking cameras, which the spacecraft will primarily utilize to autonomously latch onto and track asteroids during flybys and ensure Lucy's other instruments are pointing in the appropriate direction, which has historically proved challenging. Years before Lucy reaches her primary research goals in the outer solar system, the addition will enable the spacecraft to test its cutting-edge target tracking technology and introduce us to another little planet. In the past, most flyby missions have taken many pictures of the area where the asteroid may lie, resulting in poor efficiency and plenty of pictures of empty space, said Leverson in a statement. According to him, Lucy will be the first flyby mission to use this cutting-edge and sophisticated technique to autonomously follow the asteroid during the encounter. This unique technique will enable the crew to capture far more photos of the target. When Lucy completed the first three flybys of the Earth to allow its route to Jupiter's Trojans, it had captured a picture of the Moon. Lucy will fly through eight Trojan asteroids between 2027 and 2033 including asteroids from three distinctive subclasses, two tiny moons, and two objects that revolve around one another. After the Lucy mission is over, the spacecraft will continue to circle the Earth and Jupiter in a stable orbit, retracing the course of its exploration between them. It won't be in danger of colliding with either planet for more than 100,000 years. If the orbit becomes unstable, 
the object will either be expelled from our solar system or go on a trip to the sun. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.